the first thing my, the younger brother of my husband did was to say that he was divorcing me on behalf of my husband. No, please, wait. <laughs> your husband's younger brother, after the death of, of your my husband, husband, you were still married to your husband when before he, he died. And then your husband's younger brother went to court to divorce you on behalf, behalf of, of my your late husband. husband. <laughs> I no longer dwell on the mistakes I've made, the failures, the controversies and accusations that bother me. For the good, the bad, and the ugly have culminated in making me the woman I am today. I we was so poor, poor people used to call us poor. <laughs> because of my level of uh, financial status then, I will say, I had one shirt I was wearing every time. In the evening, I wash it. Put it in front of the fan. Yeah, put it in front of the money I would use again. But I started smoking marijuana with the Bible in Belgium, in my hotel room. Which I what, used to tear the Bible? I tore it, I started smoking, and I started telling myself, it's, it is sweeter. And from then on, I started smoking with the Bible. <laughs> she came to me and said, Richard has passed on. And I just took hold of my clothes, as if to tear them off. At that point, I felt that God had answered my prayer. So I said, thank you, Jesus. Well, I, Seven people. Yeah, I lost uh, 24 hours. That was then. There's no product without a process. And you'll be, but God says you'll be in due season. We celebrate the story behind the glory. And that's to the glory of God. Thank you for joining us for the concluding part. My name is Yudi. Thank you. <laughs> so, you said after your child died at 21, that was when you really knew what it means to be born again. Yeah. So what happened? You got to this. You point. know, when you have problem, that's when you know who your friends are. That is true. Very true. When you are okay, you have the world, the whole world as your friend. That's true. But when every friend of yours deserts you and you are alone, that's when I knew the meaning of a song. <laughs> that Jesus is the husband of me, my own husband, and no other person. You know, Christians sing that song. I am married to Jesus. Satan, leave me alone. So I told God then, I said, Lord, whether Chinwe is beautiful enough for you to marry or not. <laughs> you marry me. <laughs> it's by force. So. I said, Jesus, you've gotten a wife. Forever I am your wife. If you can keep me alive till date, and nothing evil happened to me. I passed through the valley of shadow of death. I saw Jesus there. You did, do you know what happened to me? Where at the last minute, I was looking at the clock. I thought I was given up. As if I was going to tell the people I'm going, getting into the world where they were, the time I left this world. This short sleep came to me. And in my dream, just within a twinkle of an eye, and I saw this long hand, as if it was growing out from somebody's body. Mm. I don't know the word to, I will use the word glorious. The hand was too beautiful. I was concerned at the beauty of the hand. Coming out from that body, I didn't see the body. The hand was so coming until it got to me. And I had take and drink. 
I shivered because I never knew it was holding something. I was yeah. carried away that. by the beauty and glory that the hand was carrying. And I looked at the hand and said, take and drink. And it was a silver cup. And I, you know, with my two hands, I grabbed the cup. Then something said, do you know what is in the cup that you are taking? I said, what is it? The blood of Jesus. Immediately, I gulped down the blood. And the hand was still waiting. And I gave the cup back to that hand. The next minute, you did, I was back as if I was never ill before. As if I was not the one on admission in that hospital. I came back to life fully. <laughs> God is real. Jesus is real. The blood of Jesus is real. And there is nothing that blood cannot accomplish. And ever since then, apart from, you know, once in a while, when I overstress myself, my BP will go up. I never had cause to go back again to hospital to be admitted. I've always been lively to my God, doing what I think I could do best for God, living a life that I forgot everything that anybody did to me, you know, because the Lord said we should forgive. And if you look at what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary, what is it that man will do to you that is, you know, more than carrying the whole sin of the world and putting it on just one person. And the person bear all, all those. And at the end of the day, he said, it is finished. And the amazing thing was on that same cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive. You, you can't imagine somebody cutting off your neck. And you are telling God, please forgive the person at that point in time. So if God can forgive me my sin, in fact, I've told God that before anybody will offend me, I've forgiven that person. Because for me to be alive today, it means that God has forgiven me all my trespasses. He has given me a new life. And he has given me the power to forge ahead. And that is why I am here in the, on this planet Earth today. And I thank God that as far as God could carry me, you, you know, he's almighty. He has no limitations. And if you are willing to serve him, he will lead you. He will guide you. He will show you things that you do not know. So when, you know, it was at, under this circumstance, you understand, yes. that I now, you know, one day I just talked to myself. I said, each time I go for evangelism, the stories of, widow, of widows are almost the same thing. It's hard to see a widow that did not kill her husband. It's hard to see a widow that the husband died and the whole family said, ah, you are our sister. Come, how can we help you? It's very difficult. The moment that man is called home, you are on your own and you are alone. But we thank God that God is always there for us. He's the husband of the widow and the father of their fatherless. Have you ever heard God say he's the uh, uh, wife to a widower? <laughs> no, but God says he's the husband of the widow because he knows that widowers don't have problems. Have you ever seen children that will rise against their father and say, share your property and give us our mother's own? But you will see children that will stand up and say, look, oh, you have to leave our our uh, Father. father's property to us. It happens to some widows. So, and I thank God, God has always been proving it. Like you rightly said now, he said, if anybody in the book of Exodus 22 from 22 to 24, if anybody afflicts the widow and the fatherless and she they cry at all yes. unto me, he said, I will kill them with a sword. Yes, yes, yes. And they will be, uh, their children will be fatherless and their wives will be widows. 
and God is right. So before we could get into our practice, these people, God killed them. The same year, 2002, that they died. When the court could not see them anymore, they have to give judgment. They give you back your property. Yes, and we possessed our possession. Hold the thought, hold the thought. Who says God, God's <laughs> word is not true? God says, I magnify my word above my name. What has God said to you? What is that one thing that is causing you sleepless nights? Search in the Bible. If God has done it before, it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will do it for you. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You know, when I search the word of God and I see a word there and I stand on that word and it comes to pass, it gives me such unspeakable joy. I now understand what the psalmist said, that when the, Lord when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion were like them that dreamed, and that our mouth was filled with laughter. So you moved into your house, and you possessed your possession. How did you feel when you got into your house, laid on your bed, no, you know, they, th those things are no, were no more there. They destroyed them. Yeah. yeah, even the whole house was vandalized. What they could not move is the wall. So we have to start our lives afresh. We started putting the house in shape gradually. You know, the children that could not go to school, you know, it's, you know, you can imagine children stop school for that number of years. In fact, I never knew they would even agree to go back to school because most of their mates are out of school working. But I thank God. It took me time and it took the Spirit of God to work on the words of God that I put forth before them. All of them started doing their jam at the same time, you can imagine. My youngest child was the first person to enter university. But Yudi, I glorify God today. I am full of testimonies. Today I can boast of four graduates. Four graduates. One has finished her youth school. The other one is at CAFE, doing her uh, NYSC. Then two are going in. You can see that it's as if God has created only me <laughs> on this planet. Earth. That he cares so much for me. So much. So from your experience, you decided to start a foundation for widows. Yes. So what do you do there? You know... Most widows, like I told you, yeah. their problems are alike. This issue of having no food to eat, especially the ones that are full-time housewives, you know, when the husband was alive. Having no money to take their children to school. So when I discovered, in fact, I started having passion for them because I knew I passed through that. I knew there were days I, I did not see a grain of rice to eat, a grain of gary to drink. And, you know, there's this kind of pride in you, you know. How do I go and begin to beg for food? You know, that kind of a thing. But one way or the other, you know, the Lord was supplying, giving us our needs according to his riches and glory. Well, you see, the most amazing thing about my own situation then was friends ran away. Strangers, God raised strangers, people I never knew before, were the people that God used for us. So when we now became comfortable, you know, I said, 
if people that I knew not could help me when I was in time of need, I want to be useful to people too, you know, especially, you know, when you are sick and somebody that is sick talks about sickness, you understand. When you are poor and a poor man is narrating his ordeal, you will understand. No, there's no way a rich man, somebody that has never suffered poverty understand before, will you understand a poor man narrating his ordeal. I hope you understand. So when we do, you know, in the course of my evangelism, you know, I discovered that the widows I meet, the first thing is their faces, they are <laughs> as if they are dying. No smile on their faces, you know. Nobody cares. So I now said, okay, as much as God will lead to me, you know, let me show them care. Money is not everything. You see, at that time, I was in need. If I had seen somebody that cared, you know, just come to me and say, hello, how are you today? Then you chat together. She, you understand. It takes a lot of thing out of I'm you. Money is not everything. But you didn't find any such person? That time. Mm. I, I have one person, but that, that person is like my mother-in-law in the village. She will call me. She, anybody she sees coming to Lagos, she will write, you know, she's, she's, she's an illiterate. But she will get somebody to write for her, and she will send it to me, you know, because she too was a widow. And after reading it, I will feel the presence of that woman there. My mother too tried all her best. Everything she had in the East, they will carry food from the East, you know, this Apo, you know, Ofo <laughs> Nubu, you know. It, my mother will cook the Onubu soup there. Not that she will bring the things, you know, she will cook it, put it in a large um, cooler, bring them down to Lagos for us to eat. That's at least the little she could do. But how is the foundation doing today? The foundation is fine. How many widows have you been able to take um, care of? You see, we have about, for a start, we have about 35 widows. 35? Yes. But you know, what actually happened with, is that, you know, when you want to start something and you have, an, uh, you have a solid foundation for it, you won't feel it, you know, you won't even feel it. I thank God for Pastor Charles Oje and his wife, you know. It's under the umbrella of the lighted church. The best thing that has ever happened to me is coming to the lighted church. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. So you say you have 35 widows and uh, what do you do? Do you pay school fees for the children? Do you feed them? Um, you see, that's where we need the help of people. Like I told you, thank God for my pastor. My pastor is the type of pastor that allows everybody to come out with their gifts. And he backs you up. You know, I believe in one thing, you know, keen to somebody's destiny to accomplish my own destiny. We cannot accomplish anything on our own. We cannot accomplish anything alone. And I thank God that today I am keen to the destinies, you know, of the members of the Lighted Church, especially my pastor and his wife, to accomplish my own destiny. You know, under the umbrella of the Lighted Church, you know, we um, inaugurated the smile of a widow on the 24th. The smile of a widow. Yes, the That's smile. What it's yes, because I want, the first thing I want to see on a widow is smile. I don't like that brooding face, you know, tying her tie as if you are the one that is carrying the whole burden of the world, you know. God says he is our husband. And I think if God is our husband, if you can smile when your earthly husband is alive, what makes you not to smile? When the almighty and everlasting God, the creator of that husband that you lost, says he is now in charge, says he has now enthroned himself in your family, says he's now the alpha and the omega, then it means you have no problem. The only problem you have is 
not listening, you know, not being sensitive in the spirit and allowing him, you know, allowing yourself to hear what he tells you at any point in time. So what I'm saying is, I thank God for the light because it's in the lighter church, you know, that I found my, you know, after all the things Absolutely. that happened to me. And I thank God that when I mentioned this to my pastor, he, he, get, he, uh, you know, he, he gave me a go ahead. And that is why I am here today. So there are challenges that we have in this smile of a widow thing. In our mission statement, we stated that we need money, you know, for everything we are going. The Bible says money answered all things. And since God is the one that owns silver and gold, we don't need to lack money to solve our problems. Then we have this counseling unit, you know. We have uh, a group of lawyers that teamed up with us. In case any widow has a problem that could be handled legally. Then we have professionals that are there to give us, uh, you know, make us acquire skills. Because some of these women that are idle, uh, uh, there's a saying that says, teach somebody how to fish. Don't give the person fish. Because if you give me fish, immediately I finish eating. The next day I'll become hungry and I'll begin to look for another fish. So you have to teach the person how to fish so that when he's hungry, the person will go to the river and do what? And look for fish. So we have this group of people that comes, professionals, Teachers like hat making, bead making, you know, uh, how to uh, domestic, uh, like baking, cooking, tie and dye, and all these things, you know. So, whichever one you choose to do, we have to pay the person now for you to undergo a very, uh -huh, you know. So, we are empowering our widows. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. um, Mrs. Okosa, Pastor. Thank you, Yudi. It's me that we say thank you to you. <laughs> and God bless you. And uh, your vision, um, wanting to take care of widows, because you find out that sometimes they are the abandoned of the society. Exactly. Abandoned. A woman leaves her father and mother and cleaves to a man. Mm -hmm. When is the man that should actually cleave? But then we do, it's the wife cleaves. Mm. And then the man dies suddenly, and then the woman becomes an outcast. Um, but Thank God who never forgets his children because he exactly. says, I'll never leave you, I'll forsake you. And I want to believe that everything that you went through um, was for this very purpose. Exactly. In which you're using your team to Exactly. May God give you the strength and may God's grace and favor. Amen. So wherever you walk into to seek help, to help this, the widows, okay. um, doors will open without your knocking. Amen. God bless you. Thank God you bless you too. And I pray that God will expand your course. Amen. God, the blessings of the Lord will never depart from you. 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 you know, as you're doing this, you know, you are not doing it for yourself. You are doing it because God has called you to. It's a, ple it's a privilege, you understand? Yes. When we are doing anything for God, it's just a privilege that That's God true. has given us, you know, be for what we have passed through, for us to now seize the opportunity of our experience to use it you know, to help others and to bring people to the kingdom and to make people that are in the kingdom be encouraged and know that with God, all things are possible. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you. Um, well, viewers, thank you very much. I say to people that God will not put you through a situation for nothing. Every circumstance and situation you go through, it is to glorify God. And um, when you learn whatever lesson that God uh, wants you to learn considering the situation you're going through then and only then will you be able to fulfill purpose in touching other people's lives until I come your way another time thank you for your time and have a wonderful week ahead of you goodbye